Hello there gang, Devere here, another past blast. Playing a little bit of Hostile Waters and Teus Rising, released back in 2001. Now if you're a fan of cult British 80s sci-fi, this game may be of special interest to you. As of course amongst the voice talent in the game, you have Tom the best Doctor Who ever baker as the main overall narrator. But you also have Paul Darrow, best known for his role as Avon in the cult sci-fi classic Blake 7. And he was pretty much in it throughout the whole of the, of the whole of this run of the show. As well as Glynis Barber, who played Sue Lin, also from Blake 7. But she only appeared in the last series, the fourth episode, the slightly weak fourth episode in all honesty. Um, but this isn't a video channel, so... But she also had a small bit part in one of the earlier episodes as well. So she appeared in it twice as different characters. So yes, with all that covered, let's have a look at what we get with the options. So display. Now there is an exterior launcher to set your resolution, but we'll talk about that more in game, as it's a bit of a story. So a few little settings here, some effects, a few more settings there, a couple of sound options, turn the speech volume down a tad, you'll understand why when we get into game. And controls, now another bit of an oddity. You'll notice there's a joystick, I mentioned the joysticks there. We'll talk about that in game, but also for the redefined controls, these are the only bindable keys. You do actually have more keys than that, but they're the only ones you're allowed to adjust. So what I shall do is I shall load a game, because of course the first few missions are just more like tutorials, so we can see more of the meat and veg of the action. So I shall see you guys and gals in game. We think the airfield is located somewhere in the southern sector of the island. Before you head there, make sure you create a strong beachhead as near to the carrier as possible. There's an energy production area east of your position that shouldn't prove too difficult to breach. Destroying the derricks will also slow down any unit production in the area. Once you have secured the beachhead, create a scavenging team to provide you with energy. The airfield will be well defended you'll need a strong force to take the key positions. Minitech has been working on a repair unit for Scarab. It allows you to carry out field repairs to damaged units. As long as Scarab has a soul catcher chip attached, it shouldn't need too much attention. Just move into location and allow the repair unit to lock onto you. And do make sure you keep it well defended at all times. It won't repair itself. We're also picking up erroneous readings to the northeast of the landing zone. Locate the source of the readings and investigate before proceeding to the airfield. Once you have destroyed the plane, get out of there as quickly as possible. We need to get to the wet dock before they have a chance to recover from our attack. Alrighty, so destroy the defense outpost and locate the drop plane. Easy enough, but of course, as is the way, the objectives during the game can and often will change. So here we are, currently we're in the map overview room. This game is also an RTS at heart. So you can do a lot of commanding from here. as an overall scanner map. Here's the UI for changing between different rooms. So that's what we can see at the moment. So let's go to our repair room, or to construction room, sorry. You can also use the F1, F2 and F3 keys to switch between things. F3 is just your load and save and all that kind of thing. So here's where, quickly before we dive in, one of the issues I had was getting this game to run and getting its resolution sorted. I'm not sure what resolution this is, but you can tell it's not 1080. First of all, uh, it kept crashing, so I had to set up a shortcut on my desktop directly to the game without the launcher and run it in windowed mode. Then after that, I had to set the launcher and the game to Windows XP Service Pack 3 compatibility. Now after doing that, that allowed access 
to modern resolutions such as 1920 by 1080 and if you run it in that way it cuts off it cuts off the lower half of this screen here just round about sort of where my cursor is at the moment so that made that more frustrating so and I went back to launching it through Steam that means it resets the compatibility to 90, Windows 98 and you don't get the, the, the higher resolutions anyway so yeah a few technical issues so anyway let's get on so at the moment we've only got a few vehicles we can build we have a little lifter an attack chopper and a utility vehicle so I'm going to first of all we'll get building some helicopters yeah, it's easy enough you pick your body type weapon type and again early game so I've only got these two weapon types this is like a missile launcher that's a gatling gun and this is well, during the briefing you might have heard her mention the soul catcher chips well, they, these are the soul catcher chips they're little AI buddies that were personalities that were captured just as they died and downloaded to these bio chips and if you put them in a vehicle it means they, take over, they can take over the vehicle so let's do that and again early game I've only got these handful of people at the moment so I shall put ransom in this one do, and I'm also going to add a smidgen of armor because we don't have much in the way of energy, only 4,000 energy for building. Vehicle ready and on deck. Ransom on bay one. So let's build another one of those. Borden, good, I'll go with that. I like that. I'll make sure it's got the longbow. And then I shall build that one. Complete. Borden on bay two. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build a third helicopter, but I'm going to take the soul catcher off. I'll explain for why once we get started. Make sure the longbow again. And it'll give you a little warning that you don't have the soul catcher. And finally, a lifting helicopter. And again, again without the soul catcher. Because early game, without you don't have many chips available, so you have to do a lot more heavy lifting you yourself. Complete. Boom, boom. See what I did there? Lifter, heavy lifting. Oh, yes. Right, so now we've got a force of sorts. Let's uh, go back to the map room. So you can give direct orders to any vehicle that's equipped with a chip. So for example, I could get them to go here. I need a carrier. This is just the Antaeus's, Antaeus's onboard camera. And these ones of course don't have any chips so they can't they can't be controlled by the map screen but what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to make my scarab my scavenging unit so I'm going to give uh, croaker this one and then let's scroll through our stuff again don't have any add-ons either at the moment can't afford the repair unit but I need scrap and let's uh, vehicle ready and on deck croaker on bay one so at the top there you'll see one, two, three, four, and five. They're my units I have at the moment. So if I highlight one, if I double tap, I can take direct control, because that's of course the other big selling point of this game. Is to take direct control of things. I right click to target, left click to pick up. And I don't want it to go too close to the shore just yet, because we've got some fighting to be done. So let's go to my empty helicopter. So this is a good idea to make yourself a empty one for you to command. You can, of course, if I wanted to, I could take over the AI ones as well. Or even just sit and watch the AI do things. I can stay on board as a passenger with the AI doing things. I'll use this as a sort of way of kiting the enemy around. If, I, if, I, if my one gets destroyed, I don't have to care too much. Because as your vehicles get killed, they, they get ranked up. So let's, uh, let's see where we want to go. We want to attack there. So let's... Uh... Confirmed. Oh, no, I didn't want that. I wanted to uh, drag him. Here. Now, you can do grouping like your normal uh, FPS, like Control 1 and Control 2, make them into groups. But that's, um, yeah, not such a good idea here. 
So let's give them an attack order to attack that. Let's go to the carrier, and I'll go along with them. There we go. Now they should, now that they're close enough, they should keep attacking. Well, this time they've decided not to. As an RTS, this game is not the st at its best, in all honesty. It's definitely uh, not a great RTS. Uh, so what I'm going to do... There's another way of controlling if I If I press such as 1 there, to highlight Ransom, you'll see up the top right there, kind of little set of icons appear. And that, that little air hole area corresponds to QWE, ASD, and ZX and C and allows you to issue slightly more complex orders on the fly. So if I press Q for move order, Z to follow on me, so it makes me uh, the wingman. I can do the same too, QZ for Borden. Now if I start moving in, it should come with me. There we go. So let's get this attack on. So AI issues are sometimes sometimes we're a little bit <laughs> a little bit manky. Oops, as we're going to throw it up there, let's get these things destroyed because that's what the enemy uses to produce energy. Hopefully they should sort of free row. Oh no, no is she? Oh, she's moved right forward towards the enemy guns there. Right, I'm going to move my helicopter forward. So if anything comes along, it should automatically fire on my empty helicopter first. So all those things we've blown up, if we press R to cycle through resources, everything you blow up basically leaves resources. This unit here I'm about to drop, recycles them, and that's how we get our energy. So now he's collecting all those, I'll move this slightly back in there again. So here they like to chat, right, are you guys still follow me? Does I just, just, oh, she's an M on side tank. There we go. Your AI can be very... Oops, there's a I've been hit by AA down there. Come on. Let's go and try and get these guns. So we need to get there. What? There's something else now firing at I feel like I was being shot from the right then. Maybe I was wrong. It does have contextual... Contextual sensors. So if I right click in this vehicle, it picks the nearest gun turret or the nearest threat. And the AI are pretty good there. If they're hammering a hammering a building or something, they, and a, a tanker or an aircraft appears, they do switch to the most pressing to the most pressing threat. Are you both attacking? It's kind of hard to tell sometimes if they're doing what you're asking of them. Where are you? That's the good thing about how to take take care of things, take take control of things. Because yeah, AI wise is perhaps one of the biggest issues. I'll try and get this one to help. There we go. Oh, some tanks as well. So I'll quickly jump to my helicopter now. They'll both they'll both automatically attack, and I can come and help them. Well, I hope they will do. Oh, oh no, is he... What's he doing? <laughs> yeah, the, your chip buddies, they do have preferred vehicles, and the more... the better they are in that vehicle, then the better they are at, at manoeuvring and at avoiding attacks and things like that. Theoretically. But at the moment, I mean, they're, they're normally super aggressive to the point they usually get them, they can get themselves destroyed quite quickly if you're not close by and keeping an eye on them. 
So let's go back to F1. What I want to do is I want to bring you both over here and get you to hold. And that should hopefully stop them wandering off too far and get themselves killed. But even there, they'll generally tend to slowly nudge their way forward as something comes into range. So yeah, the, the, the RTS side of this is quite weak. You will have to do a lot of heavy lifting. Right. So let's get that vehicle from there. Let's get this guy here. Our scavenger. Get him up there to get some more scrap. Oh, there's some there. But what I'll do... I'll drop that off there. You can use your lifter to move scrap towards... To your, to your, Recycle unit. So controls wise is fairly easy. I mean, this is Wasad to control the vehicle. A to lift, Q to dive. Right click for your target. You can text your targeting. And left to fire anything. The fast control method does take a little bit of getting used to. If I'm one. You do get used to it eventually. But talking of controls, there's also an issue with, as, in, as I mentioned in the looking for our options, the joystick. When you're in a land vehicle, it's not so bad because the left stick still makes your vehicle turn left and right. But I couldn't find any way of getting the camera to respond. And your camera is what steers you in this game. So the left stick on an air vehicle would only make it strafe and I could not get it to turn. And because I couldn't move the camera in the land vehicles I couldn't see any way of seeing where it was I was actually going. So best to count, count this one as a mouse and keyboard unless you're using something like you know pad style or x-pad or something like that. And you're using it to map the keys. So now I'm using a little handy load below camera there. So I find up here. Sampling in progress. There we go. That will now absorb the little thing we've just uh, So now once that become, comes online, we'll have an extra vehicle type that we can use. Right, they're all holding, right, those two are still holding the air, that's good. I like that. Where's that bit of debris? I'll take that with me when I go. Oops, what am I doing? Right, where was my boy? Where did I leave him? Ah, oh, you're over there. Good, good, good. Let's get some more uh, more energy. I saw some more scrap down here. Basically, anything you blow up will give you, will give you scrap and resources. Might as well drop them there. You can drop them from pretty much any height and so destroy them. He'll see again an AI issue. He'll probably get these couple of bits, and he might get that one, but then he probably won't go and get those. Sometimes they, sometimes, oh yeah, yeah, now he's doing it. So yeah, AI issues are definitely one of the biggest problems with this game. And their, their aggression will often get them killed, leaving, you know, leaving your plans to fall to pieces. So it's not the strongest RTS in the world. And as you can see, visually, it's not, not stellar. It's really the draw distance that's really the biggest issue. As you can see, it's very short. Although you can turn on fogging in the options, so it doesn't look as noticeable. Oh, see, this time around, he got all that. Sometimes they'll, t they'll take a little bit and s just stop and simply forget what it is they're doing. Hopefully, is there anything else close by? I mean, while we're waiting for our... And yes, as you've probably noticed, that your AI are super chatty. They do like talking. 
a lot, especially when combat's kicking off and late game when you've got a lot of AI chips. Soul catchers. As well as on top of the enemy chatter. <laughs> yeah, you overhear the enemy chatter. It can become quite the party. Oh, so, oh that's... Hmm. I'm not going to be able to go up there just yet. I wonder if we'll be able to get, pick off some of this stuff. Yeah, there's a couple of... Those machine guns are fairly easy to destroy, so let's get them. I tend not to use direct attack orders because they do commit to it. Oh, but I loaded something else. Well, that caught me by surprise. That teach me not to pay attention. <laughs> right, so now... Now we can... A salamander. I'll give him the longbow. Soul catcher chip. I will give him to Patton. As you could probably guess with the name, you can guess what hit vehicles he likes. And uh, I'll give him a bit of armour, because we've got quite a bit of energy at the moment. Energy that you collect, uh, it doesn't matter how much you collect, it doesn't carry over to the next mission. You always start with a small limited amount. But once you're in mission, once you get mid-game, you won't have a problem with it ever again. Unit complete. Somebody tell this boy who I am. See, if they don't like the vehicle you put one, they'll complain. So he doesn't get any bonuses for using this. He uses, he gets better bonuses in, in heavy armour. And, oh, I might as well make my repair scab now. And another slight annoyance, you can't just drop something in over and replace it. You have to drag this one off first. And we put our repair thing in with Korolev. And obviously there's no space for armour, so we'll go with that. Where are we? Oh, no, some combat. Which side are they coming from? It's very easy to get turned around in this game. Oh, well, there goes my vehicle. Doesn't matter, I'm going to get on with this bit. So let's go to the map. So, good thing being that it's that, say, hovercraft. You don't need to worry about carrying it. So we want to get him over here somewhere. Let's try and bring him down this gully. Generally, the pathfinding here is not too bad. They do occasionally they get lost or get stuck on something. So again, you have to kind of keep your eye on things. Because the game does lack a lot of the RTS basics you'd expect, such as you know, tell them to retreat on certain amounts of damage, or you know, hold fire, or only fire fired upon in return. So yeah, there can be a lot of micromanaging. I've got the repair unit coming, so we should be back there shortly. So yeah, it, I'm probably not selling this game so far with a lot of issues it's having. Well, I've mentioned. Oh, I might as well mention one more. There's no time compression. So this moment here, travelling back and forth, especially which you have to do a lot early game. There's no way to speed this bit up. You just have to kind of suffer it. Hello, I'm going the wrong way. Across this way. Oops, saying that. <laughs> There's an AA gun over there. Should be able to take that though, anyway. What, what position can't you get to, Patton? Oh no, there he is, he's firing. Because he's a hovercraft, so those AA gun things won't get a fire on him. Let's, let's bring you over to get you repaired. See again, that's fine. Sometimes you'll park right in front of the repair vehicle and it'll just sit there looking at you. So yeah, I don't seem to be selling this game. But it is actually very good. A lot of mission, a lot of 
I mean, obviously, first class voice acting. I say Tom Baker is the overall story narrator. Story itself's a bit. Mm. Yeah, but it's quite, quite <laughs> funny how badly they got 2012 wrong. Hello? See, see here. It's decided. There we go. There we go. So, how's pattern getting on? Really, I should make myself another. Now we've got a bit of energy. I should have made myself a spare empty hornet. Make sure I've got the longbow. Actually, how much energy have you got? Uh, no, not enough to. Not enough. Unit complete. I was going to make myself some more armour. You'll also notice at the moment that there's no direct way of renumbering your vehicles either, at least not that I know of. So, one, two, and three being helicopters. If it was you saw this one got destroyed, the, the free slot was open. It does get a bit annoying that you can't sort of change the number of groupings around. I mean, you can do grouping, grouping, like you would in a traditional RTS. Like if we take uh, these two and then control one. But now it becomes a sort of group like that. It's very hard to see in a quick in a quick rush what's going on. I prefer to leave them separated and then just sort of drag the drag them and pair them around. Right, so we should be able to attack this space now. So let's get a this is Patton. Patton, you come in. Oh, he's already over here. I'll delete that Still order. <laughs> well. Oh, we've probably already won. I'll move these guys in here. And then I'll come along with them. Well, just, just fire. Let's quick look around, see if there's anything about to attack them. B scans for different buildings. So yeah, the, the, so as much as I haven't probably sold it, there is actually a good game here. It's just you have to be prepared to do a lot of heavy lifting. Because, yeah, as an RTS, it, it's not very strong. And this what keeps it kind of active. Uh, really, it, 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 it can be quite hectic when things start kicking off, the way the different objectives keep changing. And, so all in all, despite the flaw many flaws I seem to have mentioned, this it's definitely an absolute... I mean, I suppose that's why it's got such a cult following, is because of some of the voice acting. Oh, that was rather easy going. They normally you get attacked from various places. Hmm. We'll probably conclude our dealings here, gang, because this, this next bit's going to be a big assault on this airfield. As well as now, I've got to get the scavenging. So, so bring these two up here. Uh, where are you? Let's just get you two. Okay, sir. Now here, look kind of when they get there, all right, we scavenge. So yeah, it's not the world's strongest RTS. It's a good amount of different. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's what I was think was normal. A good mixture of various vehicles with different ships as well as some of the banter between them. Although, although at times it will also get slightly grinding the amount of banter between them. <laughs> yeah, it's rather non-stop. So anyway gang, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Hopefully you found it useful in attending us some way. And as ever, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to let me know you're alive. I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.